So, after Kingdom Hearts, you would expect Kingdom Hearts 2, right? Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories is the sequel to Kingdom Hearts and is not Kingdom Hearts 2, but also technically is. And if you thought that was weird, wait till we get into the other games of the series. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories occurs right after the end of the original Kingdom Hearts and is very different to the first game combat-wise. There's also two versions of the game, the original Chain of Memories for the Game Boy Advance and the remake for the PS2, titled Rechain of Memories. Thanks, Nomura. I'll be reviewing the remake, Rechain of Memories. This version of the game has many changes from the original. The most obvious change is the graphics. It went from pixel art to full 3D models akin to the first game. But there's also many other changes. The movement controls are better, there are new cards, a lot more voice acting. Dialogue has been fixed, slates, reaction commands, and other more minor changes. So yeah, quite a lot of changes. Moving on to the writing, it's good. When it comes to the narrative of this game, I was not that invested compared to the first game, but I still like it. It has its own charm. As I previously mentioned in my review of the first game, the story was simple, and it doesn't try to be overly dark for no reason. This game is the opposite of that, it's messy, and has a much darker atmosphere compared to the first, for no real reason. Some dark moments work well, but others not so much. I still feel that the first game is much more tragic than this one, it was tragic because of the characters. For example, Riku trusts the dark side in the first game to gain more power and to be able to leave his island. Because of this, Sora was left feeling confused. Add on to this the fact that Kari is gone missing and Sora would be in a mentally unstable place. Even the ending of the first game was bittersweet. Sora went all that way to reunite with both his friends, only to be split up at the end again. No one dies, but the characters get tested mentally. Rechain of Memories just kinda has people dying all over the place, and dumb conflicts. It does introduce some of my favorite characters in the series, but almost all of them have little to no backstory. Granted, a few of them get developed in later games, it still doesn't change the fact that this game's characters are underwhelming, to say the least. I did say that I liked the first game's villain because he was mysterious, but these villains just feel underdeveloped. Now, onto the main setting. So after the first game, Sora, Donald, and Goofy end up at a place called Castle Oblivion. This is where the entire story is set. The setting of this game is great. A castle in between the light and dark just sounds cool. And it's probably the best part about this story. As Sora progresses through Castle Oblivion, he loses his memories. Around this time, other characters like Namine appear. What she does is fill in the blank memories that Sora loses over time with fake ones. It's a neat and scary idea. Imagine losing memories of cherished ones and cherished moments and then being replaced with fake ones. It's dark, it's interesting, I like it. The problem is how they used it. Almost all the world building is near the end of the game, which leaves the first parts of the game feeling like filler. It's not even good filler, it's just boring writing. The character interactions are pretty fun though. Seeing these new villains interact and mess with Sora was entertaining to me, especially the true villain who just messes with everyone. It's just a shame that they don't develop said villains in this game. There is also a separate side of this game which follows Riku's journey through Castle Oblivion, but I found it to be boring. Overall, the writing of the game is good, but lacked necessary world building and character development. Moving on to the sound design, it's great. Yoko Shimomura delivers once again with a great soundtrack as well as one of my favorite boss themes in any video game I've played. That being the final boss theme. This game does use tracks from the first game, but they work well, so I'm not really complaining. The voice acting, for the most part, is good. There are a few exceptions, though. The voice for Sora sounds way too old, especially since this is right after the first game, but it makes sense since voice actors do age as well. The voice for Mickey was also pretty out of place, but this one is totally understandable since the voice actor, Wayne Alwine, was suffering from diabetes at the time and unfortunately died less than a year later. I commend him for still acting even when very sick. Other than that, all the other voice cast work well with their characters. I especially love Quentin Flynn as Axel. We are just nobodies who have no one to be, yet we still are. But now you can be nothing instead of just being a nobody. You're off the hook. No! Please don't! I don't want to- Goodbye. As for the sound effects, they're great. They work as well as the first games and sound very satisfying. Overall, the sound design of this game is great and works very well with its gameplay and story. 
Onto the graphics, and they're great. They look even better than the original Kingdom Hearts, and the new designs for the characters look amazing. Each of them has their own distinct look. Problem is that they all wear the same outfit, but god damn does it look good. This game officially introduced the Organization 13, and they look so damn stylish that I don't even care that they wear the same outfits. The best part is how cool Castle Oblivion looks. It looks mysterious, overwhelming, but at the same time inviting. Like it wants you to enter and find out what it really is and what it holds inside. It is personally one of my favourite settings in the franchise, and the art direction for it helps tremendously. Overall, the graphics of this game are great and hold some of my favourite designs in the franchise. Here are where things get messy. The gameplay. I don't really like it. It has some neat ideas like the card system, but it relies too much on RNG. A good portion of this game requires you to have great RNG to proceed. This makes it very annoying. Now, I have horrible luck. Ask any of my friends and they will tell you wild stories of how shit my luck is. So add my shit luck to this game and you're just begging me to throw my system out the window. The game doesn't rely on skill or learning the game's mechanics like the first game. It just relies on RNG and cheese. By cheese, I mean spamming the same goddamn slates to win. Like, the game is so damn easy to cheese that it feels like it's recommending me to do so. <laughs> I fucking hate it, man. Because of this, the game is far too easy and does not deliver a challenge like the first game does. It's just riddled with bad design. One of my good friends just skipped over this game after playing a couple hours because he was just so bored. I had to explain to him what was so important about the story and stuff, and you know what he said? I'm glad I skipped over it. The gameplay had some neat ideas, like how combat flowed, but it just didn't work out because of the problems that it was plagued with. Overall, the gameplay of this game is not fun, and is a huge step down from the first. Here's where I sound even more disappointed. The level design. It is such a huge downgrade from the first game that I want to shoot myself in the foot. As I mentioned before, the game relies on RNG for you to proceed through the game. Let me expand on that. This game needs you to get certain numbered and colored cards to go through doors and access different rooms in the game. To get these cards, you need to defeat enemies, but here's the problem. What you get is entirely up to luck. No in-game stat or anything, just pure luck. No real puzzles, and no challenge. Why? Why? The number of hours I've spent just trying to get cards in this game is turning me into a psychopath. It, it, just how do you decide this when making single player games like this? This isn't one of those EA shitty reskin FIFAs or a shitty gacha game. It is Kingdom Hearts. Why is RNG required to move on to the next level? Why? Fuck! Overall, the level design of this game is worse than my first relationship. Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories is a mixed bag. On one hand, it has a pretty interesting story, great setup, great sound design, and great graphics. On the other hand, it doesn't flesh out the world or characters enough, its gameplay is boring, and its level design is anger inducing. I don't hate this game, nor do I think it's overall bad. Just a very disappointing sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. My f final score for this is a 6.5 out of 10. Bop. Thank you for watching. If you couldn't tell, I tried something new with this video. I got the whole camera system. It is pretty shit though, because I'm using my phone's camera. I don't have a proper tripod or good lighting. <laughs> at all. So it is pretty shoddy for now. But thanks for watching regardless, I hope you enjoyed. As you can tell I have um, a meme over here from Just a Pancake from this game. Thanks for watching. Uh, my Twitter and Twitch are below as always, as well as my Patreon now. Um, so if you feel like supporting me, go down there and support me. <laughs> uh, it will be greatly appreciated. Thank you again and have a good one.